Texas A&M has got to go get a wide receiver in the transfer portal. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. The transfer portal opened up today, ladies and gentlemen. Yesterday, excuse me. Um, and we saw a few players jump into the portal we were expecting. We saw Jacoby Matthews leave and then Alex Howard, who we talked about yesterday. So now the question is, who are the Aggies going to go get? Now, I've got a feeling some players like to play in the spring game, get a feel for it, and then decide if they're going to hit the portal or not. I think you might see another player or two leave, but the positions you got to go get some guys. No debate, no question. I think so. I have three tiers. I have tier one, you need them. Tier two, eh, you could use one, wouldn't yell at you. And tier three, I think we're all good. In tier one, we have two positions, wide receiver and linebacker. We're going to start talking about receiver. So Jabri Barber went down with the injury to his foot. He's going to require some surgery that's going to take him several months, quotes, because we don't know exactly what that means yet, but several months to get back. So once again, and we talk about the portal, what does it mean? Why do you need players in the portal? Well, let me answer that question. You need players in the portal at positions where, okay, you build a roster. You originally build a roster heading into spring. And, of course, some of your freshmen aren't here. There are some variables that need to be figured out. And then after the spring, you reassess. Now is when the coaching staff is reassessing. And I think that they're going to look at that receiver room and they're going to go, hey, we feel good about it, but we don't feel good about the depth. And that's exactly how I feel, especially I, in all honesty, I would have probably had wide receiver in this tier before Barber's injury. And once again, he might be good to go for the start of the season. Several months, it's all relative. What does several months mean to you? It's a relative statement. So, you know, I think you got to go get somebody. And we talked yesterday about how at linebacker, I feel really good about the young linebackers you have. To where in linebacker, we'll discuss in a minute, but I wouldn't mind if you went and got an old guy with one season eligibility left. With receiver, you've got some young, talented players, but I wouldn't mind seeing you go get a young receiver. That's a position where I would say for depth, go get someone that's played a year or two or college football. And I think this is where you go get those, those players who maybe they were a four-star guy and it just never worked out. Stuff like that. You know, give you take a um, a project. This is where you take a project and say, Hey, can I fix this kid? He was talented out of high school and it never really panned out at the first stop. Let's see if we can figure it out. I don't mind doing that in the portal at receiver, knowing the roster you have, as we always discuss, feel good about, uh, I feel good about Micah tease. I think he's going to be a depth piece. First guy off the bench. I feel good about the transfer Cyrus Allen. And then of course your guys, Moose, Jade Walker and Noah Thomas feel great about them. I really do feel good about the top end of this wide receiver room, but then that's when, okay, you've got some of the young guys, you've got the freshman um, Williams, you've got some, some guys where I like the upside, but it, you don't want to be playing freshman. I think you need to go get another receiver in all honesty. I wouldn't be upset if you went and got two, if you decided, Hey, I want to go get a young guy with three years eligibility left. And then an older guy with one year, you could go do that. I wouldn't be upset about it. I think this is a receiver room where you got to go get somebody with Jabri Barber down. Now, I do have a feeling that Jabri Barber will be back. And if he's out, it'll be two or three games. But then he's got to get back in shape. He's got, And it's a foot injury. He's a receiver. He's got to run. He's got to get his legs back under him. There's a lot going on there. So this injury could stretch itself out to where we flat out just need another guy. 
So receiver is my number one. You got to go get somebody there. And then number two is linebacker. We talked yesterday about Alex Howard hitting the portal. We talked about how Sanford, or Sanford, excuse me, is starting to play better. We talked about how we feel good about Scooby Williams. And you've already got Terry York. So we got Terry York. We need somebody else. And I think that Scooby Williams and Sanford stepping up is great. Some of these other guys, then you've got some of the young guys. You've got some young guys. You've got some of the older guys that I just don't believe in, aside from, you know, Sanford. And he's not, you know, a super old guy, but, um, you know, he's still young technically. But what I'm saying is, I think you got to go get a linebacker. Lyle linebacker, as I kind of hinted at a minute ago, is a position where I wouldn't be upset if you went and got an older guy to just come in and fill a role for you this year and then graduate, whatever, get a degree, get an extra degree in something, whatever he wants to do. That's what I would do there because I feel I'm starting to feel better about Scooby Williams, which we discussed a little bit yesterday, but I don't know how I feel about the depth. I think we all agree. I saw some folks comment, hey, Yesterday, we need some linebackers, and I'm with you. I think we need some receivers and some linebackers bad. I think if you go get two players at each of those positions, I'm going to feel really good. I think you're going to see a few more players enter the portal, which is going to give the coaching staff room to continue to add a few more players via the transfer portal. So I feel pretty good about um, needing to go get a guy at those positions, maybe two. If the coaching staff went and got two linebackers and two receivers, I wouldn't be upset about it. Not one bit. I think you could use it. And I think you're going to see a couple more guys after the spring game enter the portal to where we go, okay, we've got more scholarships to work with. Then my tier two. Tier two, as I said, it's you could go get a guy. I'm not going to be upset if you do. I won't be upset if you don't. And that is offensive line, the, the secondary, and then the running back room. The running back room, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I want to ask a question. Has anybody heard anything about EJ Smith? I mean, I haven't heard a peep, a peep about him. Not a peep. He's on the roster. I haven't heard a peep at spring practice. And he was a guy, you know, I talked to our Locked On College football host, Spencer McLaughlin, and he told me, hey, in the right system, this kid can be special. I didn't think they used him right. They used him right at Stanford. I haven't heard a peep about him. Is he hurt? I can't find anything. There's not a single, no one's written an article. No one's put, any, there's nothing on Twitter, nothing on an article since he committed. So I, uh, what's going on with him? I don't know. Um, next time we hear from Coach Elko, I think it'll be a question I ask. But if y'all have heard something there, let me know. Because like, I, I haven't heard a peep anywhere. Um, but he's on the roster. So interesting there. But I wouldn't mind, and I, I believe I saw Texas a and already reached out to a running back. I wouldn't be upset if the Aggies went and got one more running back, just because we talk about, okay, Moss and Owens are banged up, you're in trouble. You are in big trouble, especially if this staff does not have much confidence below those guys. I think they feel okay about Daniels, but do you feel better below there? And I think the answer is no. So, you know, you're in you're a, in a serious injury and the guy being banged up away from being in deep, deep trouble when it comes to the running back room. So, that's a room I wouldn't be upset if they went and got a guy, but once again, I think you could be okay with it. And part of the problem there is you didn't go get anybody in high school. N- not going to get anybody out of the high school recruiting class also caused issue there because you don't have a true freshman to be like, okay, well, worst case scenario, we've got this talented freshman here. So that's a position I wouldn't be upset if you went and got somebody. Offensive line, kind of same thing here. I feel pretty good about the offensive line, but I'm also a believer in you can't have enough. I'm sure you can't have, you know, you can't have too many. Like you cannot have, if you go get another seven offensive linemen, I'll be like, okay, that's fine. If you got the roster spots for them and you feel like you're pretty good everywhere else, go get linemen. We'll take as many of them as you can. You got to have five offensive linemen out there. They get hurt. They're getting into a mini car crash every single play. Go get more offensive linemen. I want to feel better about that position group. But I also won't be upset if you don't. I If I was a betting man, I would say they at least add one lineman just based on the vibe. But I think that, Everybody seems to feel better about this offensive line as a whole. So that's my thoughts there. And then in the secondary, same thing here. I'm feeling better. The coaches seem confident. Um, But we've heard of some guys that are banged up, and I wouldn't be upset if you went and got one more guy. I don't think it's necessary, but I'm not going to yell at a wall if you don't go get somebody. Then the defensive line, tight end room, and quarterback room, I feel really good about all those rooms. If If you wanted to go get another defensive lineman, 
not going to yell at a wall once again. Um, tight end, quarterback, I really, you're fine there. Defensive line is the one that I have in the no-need category that you could talk to me and say, hey, let's go get one more guy. Let's go get one more proven um, guy. But with with the recent addition, uh, the kid from you know the, the other day, the other day, it's like I feel pretty good about this room. So that is my thought there on portal needs, portal positions. So let me know in the YouTube comments, hey, what's going to make you feel better? What does Texas A&M have to go get in this portal window to make you feel better about next season? Let me know that in the YouTube comments. We're going to talk a little bit about, are there going to be some packages for other quarterbacks to run the football? We're going to talk about that. And then the quarterback room as a whole coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our wonderful friends over at Monopoly Go. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime, and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low, not sure how you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right, the smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go. Let's you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compete to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra awards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. So this is going to be a fun slash interesting conversation because, you know, we often, we often talk about this here at Locked on Aggies. We often say, we often say that we feel good about the quarterback room and I do, I feel great about the quarterback room, but one thing that I'm not sure about is Will another quarterback have packages maybe in the run game, any kind of gadget plays? And if you look at Kansas State last year, the backup quarterback, I believe his name was Avery Johnson, uh, he got some packages with a healthy Will Howard. And that, you know, and this was a comment. Uh, someone commented this, so I appreciate whoever commented it because it's a great conversation to have. Will there be packages for whoever isn't the starting quarterback? Once again, we are a – it's Connor Wigman – podcast here i assume connor wigman is going to be the starting quarterback for the aggies this year so then the question becomes will jalen henderson or marcel reed have some packages to run the football i I want to say no that's what i want to say i want to say no but then the more i sit and i think about it I, i just i feel like if coach klein did that at Kansas State, why would he not bring that with him to Texas A&M? Especially knowing that he, you know, has quarterbacks here who can run the football. He has that option. So this is a really interesting offseason topic for me. Um, and I want this to be we, – we do this a lot here at Locks on Eggs. I want this to be back and forth. I, I mean, once again, like – I. I I'm leaning one way or another on this. I, I can see it going either way. I want to hear y'all's thoughts, and then we'll have another conversation about it down the road. But uh, this is the argument I want to make. I, I I want to say no, but I feel like if Coach Klein did it and he has the weapons, he did it at Kansas State, and he has the weapons to do it here, which he does, then he's going to do it. So I love Coach Klein's offense. I love what he did last year at Kansas State. I love how effective they were in the red zone. I love everything about it. As every one of you every day is here at Locked on Aggies know, I love this offense. They've done an incredible job. Um, Coach Klein has since being an OC. I think he's a star in the industry, and I really do think he's going to just take off. I think he'll be a head coach soon. But I am anti-packages for quarterbacks that aren't your starter. Now, once again, I am not 
an offensive coordinator in the SEC. But I'll tell you my opinion on it. I don't like getting a quarterback out of rhythm. And I just feel like if you take a quarterback out, run a gadget play, it can get somebody out of rhythm, especially if it, you know, not often would it would it turn into to back-to-back plays. But like, I'll give you an example. Let's say you got first and goal from the five. Connor Wigman's taking the team all the way down the field, made some great throws. And then you bring in Henderson or Marcel Reed to run a gadget play, running the football. It gets stuffed. And now it's second to five. Uh, Connor Wigman runs back on the field. I, I just don't know how much I like that. You know, I don't. And I think there's a time for it. I think that definitely like the red zone packages. I just think if your quarterback's got you there, let him let him get you in. You got you there, get it, let him get you in. So I don't like the way packages for quarterbacks messes with your starters rhythm. I also think that Connor Wigman, and I know that Coach Elko has kind of discussed this. He is coming back from that injury. He's not 100% moving with his legs. There's a lot of question marks there when it comes to the legs of Connor Wigman. So is he my, – my point is, if he's 100% when the season starts, he can run the football himself. He's very athletic. He's very quick. And it's one of those like surprising quicks. Right? He'll roll out to his right, and then he'll see he's got green grass ahead of him, and he just runs. And you go, oh, man, Connor Wigman picked up 14 plays on that run. I mean, 14 yards on that run, and it looked like it looked like he didn't go anywhere. He's deceivingly fast, and I, I think that you can use that to your advantage as an offensive coordinator. Now, once again, Will Howard could also move a little bit at Kansas State, so that clearly didn't matter there. I guess what I'm getting at here is I'm not entirely sure the type of packages that we're going to see for the backup quarterbacks. Are there going to be any at all? I don't know. I mean, really, like this is one of those I don't know. I think this could go either way. I could be, I could be talked into it. I could be. I trust Colin Klein. I so trust Colin Klein to do a good job. I am not concerned about that in the least bit. But I'm anti packages for non your starting quarterback. I want to hear y'all's thoughts in the YouTube comments on this. I'm really curious. I want this conversation to be back and forth because. I when I first sat today and I was like, I want to talk about that on the show later. I sat and I, I said to myself, I'm like, for a minute, I was like, they're gonna do it. Then I was like, no, they're not gonna do it. And then I was like, well, Coach Klein, if he if he he has athletic quarterbacks here, he had him at Kansas State. If he did it there, he's gonna do it here. He's Coach Klein seems to be huge on he'll do what he has the personnel to do. And he had the personnel to do it at Kansas State. He did it. He has the personnel to do it at Texas AM. Leads you to believe he's gonna do it. But um and listen, you can't knock what they did last year at Kansas State offensively, but I personally am anti quarterback packages. Uh, you know, backup quarterbacks coming in to run the football. I want to hear y'all's thoughts on this. But um, as a whole, I mean, I feel good about the quarterback room right now. I really do. I think that these three guys are battling. I think that you've got three dudes that legitimately could start at a whole bunch of schools in the SEC, a whole bunch of schools in the country. I think that Henderson and Marshall Reed, assuming they end up being the two backups, and that'll be an interesting storyline too, which one of them ends up second and third on the depth chart. That is a fun storyline in and of itself because you don't want to lose either of those guys to the portal. But it's going to be really interesting to see, can these guys give Connor Wigman a run for his money? I'll be honest with you, I lean no on that. But I do think that, and it was something I harped on so many times last off season when doing this show or heading into last season when doing the show was, listen, you've got so many talented quarterbacks on this, on this roster with, with uh, Max Johnson last year. And, and I felt good about not every SEC school has a team. I mean, has a quarterback room where your main guy goes down and you go, okay, well, we're going to be okay. And that's the spot Texas A&M was in last season with Max Johnson and it's the position they're in this year with Henderson and Marcel Reed. So I feel great about the room as a whole, but when it comes to packages, I'm in all honesty, I'm excited to kind of get that answered. We won't get it answered in the spring game, unfortunately, because, you know, even if they run the quarterback, it's he's going to go for a few yards and get touched and he's down and that's, you know, whatever, who cares? So 
we might see some packages like that, but then also all the quarterbacks will be getting their shot. So it's not like Wigman's going to have a drive and they're going to say, okay, Henderson, Reed, go in there and, and, and run, so run a quarterback draw. You know, they're not going to do something like that. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plans out. But once again, let me know that in the YouTube comments. I'm really curious to hear everybody's thoughts on will the other quarterbacks, assuming Connor Wigman wins the starting job, get packages in the run game. I'm anxious to hear y'all's thoughts on that. We're going to talk about the Aggies' win in the midweek over Air Force. Another huge win for the best team in college baseball. We'll break it down and talk a little bit about the Alabama series coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our buddies over at Yahoo Finance. When it comes to your finance, your financial future, you think you've done it all. You've saved, you've researched, you've invested all that you can. Now you need to take those investments to the next level using ex exactly what every financial grade uses, Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or are looking for extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They are the number one finance destination producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and a ton more. It's the place I go for all my financial advice. It's what I'm using right now. I'm, I'm young. I'm starting to save money and work on finances and all that, and Yahoo Finance is exactly where I'm doing it. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. So now I want to talk about the Aggies' win over Air Force on the baseball field. You know, and before we get into the game itself, I want to talk a little bit about how important it is to win midweek baseball games. So, you know, we've seen Florida struggle with this. I'm trying to think what other SEC teams have lost in a lot of midweek games. But these midweek games, okay, let's break it down like point A to point B. What matters in college baseball is hosting a regional, and then if you win your regional, hosting a super regional. You don't want to have to leave your home ballpark until you are driving to Omaha. And now, once again, Texas A&M has put themselves in an incredible spot. I mean, they're the number one team in baseball. They would have to fall off hard in these final 15 SEC games to not to not host a super regional to be, you know, be in that position. But still, it's possible. And a way to do that is to lose midweek games. It hurts the RPI. It hurts all of the different metrics, you can't lose midweek games. You just cannot do it. So Texas A&M hasn't. We have seen a lot of SEC schools. I wonder if any SEC schools haven't lost a midweek game. I need to check on that. Um, you know, it's really, it's incredibly important not to lose midweek games. You can't do it. If you lose those games, it hurts you because generally you're not playing very good teams. So the key is to win them, and Texas A&M has done a great job of that, and that is so important. What I'm saying is I'm sure everybody's like, yeah, we beat Air Force. You know, who cares? We beat Texas State. We beat uh, UTSA. Woohoo, right? A lot of those games, we've seen a couple of them where it looked like the Aggies might lose, but they found a way to get the win, and it's, it's so important. It might not feel important, but it will be when it comes to the selection show after the SEC tournament. I'm just telling you that right now. So um, another huge win, doing a great job, continuing to win these incredibly important non-conference midweek games. So Lavalette continues to do Lavalette things. He's 4-6 in this game, five RBIs, two home runs. I, I mean, I, I just – the power – He's able to generate on off-speed pitches is so – I think he hit one like 468 feet in this game. It, it just – and he's doing this off like 72-mile-per-hour curveballs. That's just so impressive, the, the the power he possesses in his swing. He's just such a strong dude. He hits the crap out of the baseball. Ted Burton, two for three, two RBIs in this game. Hayden shot, stays hot, going two for four, two RBIs in this game. Montgomery continues to do Montgomery things by hitting quite – Another home run. That dude absolutely rakes. I, I think that 
um, that Jason and Montgomery are two of the best players in 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 all of college basketball. And I, well, it's one of these. I think I don't. Th- I know that. I say I think. No, I know that. That's a fact. They are two of the best players in all of college baseball. I think both of these guys can be professional baseball. Not professional. I'm talking in the show someday. That's how good they are. Um, so the staff, you know, everybody gave up a couple hits. Everybody gave up a run here. Pretty, pretty much everybody. But the point is, you know, you win this one 15, uh, five in, in, um, seven innings, but only two free bases. You let a guy get a couple hits and you get out of the jam that, you know, giving up five runs when your offense is going like this, you can live with it. So pretty happy with this game more than anything, just because you continue to win your midweek games. And that is all that matters. Keep winning these games. You cannot lose them. You got Alabama coming up this weekend. Um, I've seen them play in person a few times, a a, a team that they can swing it a little bit. I wasn't overly impressed with their pitching, but still you got to win a series. So you're playing them on the road. You got to go take two or three, not asking for a sweep, but I'm asking for two or three. I am asking because you are the best team in college baseball. Go get the job done. This baseball team, and I'm going to say it every time until this season ends, whether it ends holding the trophy or not, this team can win a national championship. If you want to, I'd go bet right now on Texas A&M to make the World Series and to win it all because I think they are the best team in college baseball by a significant margin. I would love that series against Florida over again really, really bad. But this baseball team is really good. And last thing, once again, let me know in the YouTube comments. What positions do you want to see Coach Elko and company add via the portal? And then what um, do you think Texas A&M, Coach Klein, will use some packages for the other quarterbacks other than Wigman to run the ball, assuming he does win the job? Let me know those things in the YouTube comments. I'm anxious to hear y'all's thoughts. Hope everybody has an outstanding rest of the day today. That's going to do it for us here at Locked on Aggies. Appreciate y'all being here, and we will see you tomorrow.